Hi, and welcome back, everyone, to episode two of season four of The Canary Room and a return of the check shirts. Uh, you know, a number of comments on the um, the Facebook page about the check shirts and, you know, a little bit of concern, I think, as to whether they would return. They have returned. Uh, they've returned with uh, a Canary Room classic um, for, for this episode today. Uh, before we get into the show, a huge thanks to everyone who's donated to the channel. Uh, your donations massively, massively appreciated. Uh, not content with donating to every episode in season three. The guy's at it again. It's a good friend from down under. It's Michael Burling. Mike, appreciate it, mate. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, massive thank you, of course, as well to Paul Larkin. Um, significant donation. Very generous. Thank you, Paul. Very much appreciated. To Martin Jen to uh, Kieran McAvoy. Thanks, Kieran. Really appreciate it and really glad you enjoy the show. To Tony Corns and to Beethoven Dellison. So everybody, thanks very much indeed for your very, very kind donations. If you're able to, there's a donate button on the homepage. It helps fund uh, the show and, and, and what I do here for the Canary Room. So very, very much appreciated. Thanks, everybody, for... Um, your very kind words on the show. It seems that the the, the new features, the, the new animations have been um, have been really enjoyed, and, and I really appreciate that. So uh, thank you very much indeed. Uh, coming up on the show today, well, um, <clears throat> we've got a return of those features. We've got the native diaries um, all ready. Some uh, some heartache in the native diaries. Uh, we will look at the. Um, the Norwich Notebook New Colour Corner, New Colours Corner. I'll get it right one day. It's a new section. I'll get it right. We've got Bird of the Week. And of course, coming back now, it's question time. So we've got three questions coming up on today's show that I'll answer. Uh, we'll look at the fifes and we're going to look at the principles of pairing, my seven principles of pairing. Uh, and we'll look at the, the development of my variegated lines on the Fife's in today's show. As always, everyone, grab yourself a cuppa, sit back, and enjoy the show. I was uh, I was out in the Canary Room pretty early this morning doing a, a clean before the show. Um, I clean the birds, sort of a, a deep clean every couple of weeks, and, and, and a sort of surface clean weekly and every other day, really, just taking any excess musk muck over. I um, well, you can see from this footage here. It, you know, we've had we've had all all four seasons uh, this morning, so. Um, Footage here just shows uh, it's a hailstorm essentially, uh, but the baths went on, um, irregardless. So the baths went on all of the British and all of the Canaries as well. Um, I think the temperature uh, outside was about one degree, it, it was uh, just over three degrees in the Canary room itself. And um, the baths went on. Uh, a couple of the Siberians you can see here just you know jumped straight in and and and, and seemed to enjoy the bath. So, um steady away. What I'd like to, to look at is um, is the development of our, our variegated line and, and, and firstly we're going to look at um, my, my seven principles of pairing. So I'm going to do a, a standalone video uh, that's going to be on our YouTube channel so please take a look at that on the principles of pairing, the seven principles of pairing. But we're going to have a look now uh, at my variegated line in the fifes and my plans for the variegated line for the breeding season in 2021. With the, um, with the fifes this year, um, I've got here um, nine sort of dark, well, dark and, and variegated buff hens. And one of the things that um, I, I'm looking to do, we'll look at the development of the dark lines uh, in, in a future episode. But one of the things that I'm looking to do is um, run the, the bird of the week cock that we saw last week uh, over um, as many of these birds uh, as I can this year. Now, it's unlikely he'll get all nine. Uh, first round, I've got him earmarked for four. Um, and then I'll try and get him across a, a couple of others. So I want to try and get him over as, as, as many as I can. Uh, I think he's, he's, he's that good a quality bird. Um, 
my variegated line, well, <laughs> variegated uh, are a bird that, um, you know, I had my, my first sort of big successes with. So both of my best novices uh, were variegated birds, buff hens, actually. Um, and uh, what I wanted to do is really develop, you know, a quality variegated line so I can be competitive across all of the colours. Um, and the foundations of this line have been, ha have been sort of well set. Um, there's two cock birds that I want to, to show you now. Uh, two yellow cock birds, variegated yellow cock birds. One is an outcross, so it's bought in this year from Gerald Spencer. A really nice bird, this really strong bird, really strong pe pedigree to it, uh, and built uh, around some of the birds that I've got in the shed. So that, that really sort of fits in. The other variegated yellow cock that we can see here is a bird that I bred last year. Uh, it was bred out of my uh, variegated white cock and a um, variegated yellow hen. So it's a, it's a good, strong, solid cock bird there. So these are the two cock birds that I'll be using. I mentioned a, a short while ago my principles of pairing and I've developed um, a, a model really that works for me around my principles of pairing and it's the seven principles of pairing. As I mentioned earlier, there is a standalone YouTube video that goes into uh, into a bit more detail on the principles of pairing, so there'll be a link in this description. Check that out. But essentially what I'm looking for as I consider those various different principles is breeding birds to the model. You know, that's the overriding principle of it. I want to breed birds to the model. I've got um, four or five buff hens, and we can see them here now as, as we sort of move through them, that I'm going to use in the variegated line. There's three variegated buff hens. <clears throat> there's a, a, a ticked buff hen, and there's a self-green buff hen. Now, the self green buff hen is the sister to the heavily variegated yellow cock bird that we saw last week. The ticked buff hen is the sister to the, uh, the variegated yellow cock bird. And as I put those pairs together, I'm looking about balancing the qualities of those birds and the faults of those birds. So if I take the first variegated yellow cock, this bird's got a really strong top end to it. It's got a really nice head. It's got a really nice sort of break in the neck. It's got good position. It moves well across the perches. Good feather on it. If anything, it's a little bit narrow across the shoulders. So what I'm looking for when I pair that bird is a hen that's got some of the same qualities because I want to double up on those qualities wherever I can but also addresses some of its faults. So if I was to be overly critical of this bird, I'd say it's maybe a little bit longer than the kind of bird I'd want in the room, certainly from a show perspective, but I'm being very, very critical. And I think that's a real importance. You know, there's no good thinking every bird in your shed is incredible because it won't be. You know, I have very, very few birds in the shed that I think are the model. I have a number of birds that I think are close to the model. So as I look at that pair, you know, he's um, perhaps could do with shortening off a little bit. And so the two buff hens, probably three, he'll probably get around with the, um, the green buff hen as well. They're all shorter birds than he is. Now, not all of them have got the same head quality that he's got. So I'm hoping that head quality from him will come through on the young and the offspring. Not all of the birds have got the same free neck that he's got. So again, I'm hoping that that will be a dominant feature from him and that will come through. One of the things that I can spot in, in, in both his, uh, his mother, which is a bird I've got in the shed, uh, and some of his, um, his sort of, uh, nephews, which are birds I've got in the shed, is, is that free neck and that strong head have come through. So 
I'm hoping that they are, they're fixed within that line. If I look at the other variegated yellow cock, this bird's got um, really good width and, and it's got a, a little bit of a coarser feather. And so I've got two finer feathered buff hens. Now those buff hens happen to be sisters. One of them has got a little bit more width across the shoulders than the other. But what I'm hoping is that they'll pair up together and that the young that they produce will be of a really nice quality. So, as I mentioned earlier, there is a Principles of Pairing video on our YouTube website. Take a look, look at it and, and see what you think. So, variegated line, um, you know, it's a cross between the lights and the darks. Lots of, uh, well, lots of fingers crossed for it. Uh, let's go now to, uh, well, a new part of the show. It was the Red Pole Diaries. It's now the Native Diaries. It's the same heartache. Let's take a look. So it is the, the native diaries section. Um, it, it's almost like the red poles have taken great offense that we've turned it off uh, to, to the native diaries. Unfortunately, uh, I anticipated it to be fair. Unfortunately, I lost one of the red pole hens. So we're down to um, three straight pairs of red poles now, uh, which is one of those things it means that i get to open all of the cages up so these are all double cages now uh, and for my undiagnosed ocd that works really well uh, we've got um uh, i really enjoyed just admiring the birds over over the last few weeks i mean see some some close-up footage i've done here of of the bullfinches and um, you can see some some close-up footage of the uh, a pair of the sat neck goldfinches as well and, and they're just stunning birds. Well, it's time to introduce you to the Siskins. I've talked about them a couple of times. I've got um, an Isabel Siskin cock and a, and a normal Siskin hen. So you can see them here. can see our friends the pied red poles as well and they're looking in, in really nice shape there's a, a little bit of beaking going on which is good really encouraged to see that um, <clears throat> so that's all uh, that's all good it bodes well and then um, I caught the linnet cock up um, just to have a look at him the other day and um, you see some footage of the linnet cock and the Irish fancy here and, and that's part of a mini mewling plan that I've got going on for 2021 and these you know two birds he's starting to steady down a bit which is nice so that's um, that's something to, to very much look forward to they're in good form the natives um, or the majority of the natives are in good form I had a, a couple of questions about the um, the chaffs outside they've overwintered out there okay touchwood they're all right i'll get some footage of them probably in the next episode uh, i'll put the long lens on and, and get some close-up footage of them so you can see how they're developing as well um one of the things i'm doing for the natives at the moment they're, they're just on egg food once a week but i am giving them straight seed uh, now i like using straights uh, in the canary room and um, I, I think often as almost like a treat you know if you uh, if you mix some of the really small um straights in they, they can get lost in a seed mix they just drop to the bottom so i've got finger drawers in here um courtesy of shane at direct bird products um so the finger drawers I'm putting straights in and, and I'm giving different seeds for the different varieties. So for the uh, red poles, uh, I'm giving them larch seed. For the goldfinches, they've got wild uh, teasel, uh, which was particularly expensive, but I, I figured it was worth it. And um, the bullies, they're getting, it's not technically seed, it's um, 
rowan berries, dried rowan berries. And the siskins, I'm giving some chai seed to, uh, and I'm giving that to, to, to the canaries as well. So uh, they've all got some straights just to, you know, just to keep them active, keep them going as well. So that's where we are with the native diaries this week. Um, thanks for all the feedback on it. Uh, I'm really pleased. From the natives, let's go to the Norwich and take a look. It's time for the Norwich Notebook. Had some lovely, lovely comments uh, on the Norwich, so thanks everyone for that. Um, they've uh, they've captured my heart. Um, they really have um, done a little bit of close-up filming of them. Um, you just sort of get to see them. They're 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 slowly, slowly coming into condition. Uh, the birds, and we've got um, a new arrival uh, coming in. Um, so uh, massive thanks to Keith. Um, for, for arranging that for me. Uh, a new arrival, a yellow cock bird is going to come in to go with a, an over-year buff hen um, that uh, I've used one of the yellow cocks that I had for uh, mewling with the, the bully. So um, there was a kind of, there was a space here. Um, not massively enjoying the cold, I would suggest the Norwich. They're a little bit sort of lethargic. I've seen a um, little bit nervous, uh, particularly with a couple of the whites. Um, they're unflighted birds. Uh, one, I think, is a cock, and I've seen it warbling, and one, I think, is a hen, and I've seen that warbling as well. Um, so I'm hoping that they are um, hens, or one is a hen, at least. Um, uh, the way things stand at the moment, I've got five Norwich hens, I think. Um, what obviously I, I want to try and make sure is that I end up with five Norwich hens. Uh, and not, uh, I know that there is, um, there's, uh, there's two over here hens, so there's, there's two flighted hens there, so I know they're definite hens. The others, it's, you know, it, it's one of those things. I get it wrong with fifes. We remember last year, I thought I had two, um, two cock fifes and, uh, and they turned out to be hens. So <clears throat> one of those things we'll see. A um, little bit of a warble, so <laughs> fingers crossed. Um, but they're the Norwich and, and, you know, really, really nice birds. In in the next episode, we're going to, as part of our to-do list, we're going to look at how we trim the Norwich up. And Keith Ferry has, um, yeah, well, has sent me a, a, a video very kindly of how he trims his birds. So rather than me, a mere novice with the Norwich showing you, I'll let the master show us how he trims his birds. So that's coming up in the next episode. Make sure you stay tuned for that. From the Norwich Notebook, well, it's time to uh, to have a little look around the room. You know, one, one of the things as I uh, as I come into the Canary Room on a, on a daily basis is just sort of listening, watching, observing the birds, seeing how they, they move through into different conditions the, the the birds are a little bit more active at the moment which is you know which is a good sign uh, breeding season's probably six weeks away now um, so but they are moving towards getting closer to being ready which is really nice to see and um, wanted to take the opportunity we've seen one of the irish fancy hens that i've got in wanted to take the quick opportunity to show you the pair of irish fancy that i've got now um, you know, it, it, it has been commented on the volume of um, different varieties I've got in the canary room and, and, and the husbandry techniques. But you know what? It's all part of the enjoyment of keeping birds. And these Irish fancy, um, I, I was over at Swords in 2019. I had the, the honour to judge the, the, the show in Swords um, just outside of Dublin. And uh, the number of Irish fancy on show there was was like I've never seen, uh, and the quality of them was absolutely outstanding. What I truly, genuinely enjoyed with them was, uh, you know, as a bird, that just the sort of the position, the elegance, the style. Um, I've I've acquired a, a trio. I'm using one for a mini muling project. The others I'm going to breed straight. Uh, I may, as um, in addition, I may try and take um, a pair 
uh, run the cock over over the the other hen as well, and, and, and sort of breed some more numbers for next year. Um, lovely birds. I'm going to use them as well. Um, probably later in the season if I need to as, as some kind of foster pair. So um, as we look at those, they're in good form. The fifes, you know, they're looking in good form. See some more dark buff hens here. They're looking really good at the moment. They're, they're, they're you know, seem to be enjoying life. One of the things that's, that how I did have a question on actually was... Um, the drinkers, I bought new drinkers. While I'm on the subject of drinkers, a huge thank you to Shane at Direct Bird Products, who has, uh, as you'll see from the unboxing here, sent me um, a load of, of sort of mini drinkers. And the reason I've gone for smaller drinkers is, um, I wanted to, as I've got new cages, I wanted to replace all, all of my drinkers. I've still got the old drinkers as well, so I've essentially got two, or now three, sets of drinkers. But I was getting fed up with, um, particularly over this time of year, throwing away lots of the medication. So, you know, the birds have plenty of drinkers on. Uh, I change the, the drinkers every single day. So plenty of, of, of you know, vitamins, minerals, etc. added in the drink. And I was getting really fed up with, with throwing them away. So I was asked, what, why have I changed my drinkers? And the simple reason is I've got smaller drinkers. And particularly at the moment, these birds are in uh, just in trios, I can see, which is slightly worrying. One of the buff hens is picking up. So she's picked up uh, a little bit of... Um, uh, a little bit of uh, sawdust and she's playing it with a beak and there's now two hens fighting over it you can't see them they're just out of shot and um, so they're obviously telling me that they're advanced as i look the bully hen has got a little bit of sawdust in her beak as well so uh, things look like they're progressing more than intended in the canary room but but one of the reasons i've got these drinkers as i say is is from a real sort of economics perspective um, I think I mentioned last time there's 90 odd cages in the canary room so um, by the time I put all those drinkers on um, you know that uses uh, an awful lot of um, solution and all this does is it halves what I use so it means I throw less away so little practical tip for you um, you know uh, Birds have always got fresh water. That's vitally important. I would not compromise on that. Um, but these little small drinkers, I think they're 40 mil. They do a real job for me. Speaking of doing a real job, well, this is a bird I hope will do a real job for me. This year is Bird of the Week. He is uh, chirping away in the corner. You can probably hear him. This week's Bird of the Week, it's a clear buff cock bird. This clear buff cock is one of uh, four clear buff cocks that I'm uh, using in the 2021 breeding team. There is a, a father and three sons, and those sons are all half brothers. Um, this bird in particular is a later bred bird, um, but I really like the style of him. He's got a really strong top end. We can hear him whistling away. We'll see him now in a, in a cage. He's got a really, really strong top end on him. Um, and, you know, he's got a nice draw as a bird. He's got good position. It's it's not the show season, so he's not in show condition. Uh, but I can still see the quality in this bird that I'm looking for. Um, he will get to run over um, three clear yellow hens. Uh, there's two sisters um, and uh, an unrelated hen. Um, unrelated to the sisters, he's related to her. Um, and he's related as well to both of those sisters. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing what he produces for me this year. Uh, over the next few weeks, we will, of course, look at the clear lines and we'll look at the plans for the clear lines. But this clear buff cock is this week's bird of the week. They are uh, a new addition, at least some of them are. Some of them were here last year. Uh, it's new color quarter time. The, the new colours are um, probably the most advanced of all of the canaries uh, in the room. Um, they are really, uh, really sort of moving on um, in terms of breeding condition. And, and that's, I think, in no small part to the fact they're in all wire cages, so they get a lot more light. Uh, and they're also right by the window on the door, so they're flooded with light. And that's presenting a 
bit of a challenge for me because you'll remember in the last episode I talked about replacing these cages, which I fully intend to do. Dave is um, going to deliver me some more cages, I think, at the end of this month. Um, and that's going to give me another double, which is uh, which is good news. Never have too many cages. Um, but one of the things that I'm going to have to think about is whether I move these canaries now and run the risk of putting them in slightly darker cages and then the bigger risk of them going in the malt or keeping them in these wire cages for... Um, uh, the, the sort of the first couple of rounds something I'll think about not not made a decision on it yet um, they are um, you know in, in quite advanced condition they're looking good see the agats here um, and then the, the grey wings and, and the markings on the grey wings you know when you when you really study them as we can see from this footage the angle I've shot this um, really really nice birds really really nice birds uh, my plan I may have mentioned it last time out is um is to, to straight breed these and to, to get some young away first and foremost. I think the, the Norwich from a conditioning perspective will uh, probably be ready around April time. These birds will be down in March, uh, maybe even the end of Feb. So um, I, that's what I'm aiming to do. I'm aiming to sort of get the uh, around away with these new colours first, breed some young with the new colours first, and then, you know, float some of the Norwich eggs under them as well so we'll see uh, we'll see very much how we get on with the new colours but <clears throat> really 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 lovely looking birds from new colours it's time for question time First question is from a really good friend of mine. It's from Adam Kendall. Ad, thanks very much. Uh, what's your biggest strength and weakness in your fifes and how will you improve the weaknesses moving forward? Um, I think, Adam, you know, uh, strength in, in the fifes, I think, um, style-wise, I think they've got really good feather on them. Uh, I think type... Uh, particularly in the dark birds. I think there's some outstanding type. I think some of the clears now are um, almost of, of the same quality. Um, gotta be honest though, gotta be honest, you know, in terms of weakness, some of the birds are probably want to shorten off a little bit more. I think we've seen over the last um, sort of three or four years, you know, the, the, the fife coming really down in size and, and, and getting closer to that sort of elusive four and a quarter inches and and that's where I want want to take the birds um, I've got birds this year that are that are better than last year so you know that tells me that the, there's you know the, the pairs are put together worked and it tells me that there's progress in the stud being made um, fault lines I can look at every bird and see a fault in it there's a couple of things I'm mindful of at the moment um, a couple of the, the yellow hens in particular have um, uh, are starting to get what are called gills, so they're just around the uh, around the cheek. Um, they look a little bit gilly. It's it's not something I, I, I want through the stud. Um, generally more prevalent in the over year birds, so you, you know it could just be a development of feather over a, a couple of years. And then the other thing that I'm really really conscious of. Um, is uh, and I've seen it in a couple of the buff birds and um, you know it was in one of the cocks that I used last year uh, and it's come through in some of the young not all of the young is um, a, a mark on the front now I can see it and so of course I obsess about it but it's not something that I'm gonna uh, I'm not gonna get overly concerned about with selective pairing you know some birds will carry it it's not there all the time um, and so I've been uh, you know, I've been really honest, I think, with myself when it comes to my birds with the strengths and weaknesses. So this year for me, you know, I've got some good position on the birds now, as you saw with the uh, bird of the week. There's real steadiness in them. So this year, it's again, it's about bringing the size down. Ad, appreciate the question, mate. Thanks very much. Time for our next question. So I had a couple of questions in around lighting. Uh, so Luke McGrath and uh, David Roberts. Luke's question can you show and share your thoughts on lighting in a bird room? And David's, what's your thoughts on lighting in the cages? Um, I 
uh, lighting is essential uh, in the bird room. Uh, I have um, a full spectrum tube here uh, to uh, that I use to to to, to enhance the, the natural daylight uh, hours in the canary room. Lighting for me, single biggest element of conditioning in terms of breed it, bringing the birds into breeding condition. I know a number of people who put LED lights uh, in their cages and, and you know as I look at this block of six um, uh, where the main five breeding pairs will, will be for, for this year you know if I think about the the sort of the fifth row where I have got hens um, those cages they're not flooded with light uh, and some may argue they might benefit from it I'm not a fan uh, of lights in cages um, uh, it's a personal thing. Um, I just, I don't, I don't, I'm just not a fan. I know, I know a lot of really good friends of mine use them and, and uh, you know, I respect their view for using them. In in the main room, I have uh, a dimmer system. So um, the uh, the lights are, are enhanced 15 minutes each week. As the show goes out, I've got my lights on for 11 and a half hours. Um, so I'd anticipate sort of bringing up to 12 and a half um, 12 and three quarters uh, and the birds will be it will be absolutely bouncing I use the dimmer system um, uh, and that you know means that the birds are never plunged into darkness and that's really important for me thanks for the question fellas time for one more before we go and our final questions come in from uh, Mohammed Ibrahim I hope I've pronounced that right Mohammed um, how to handle with uh, infertility matters really good question really really good question so there's um there's an approach uh, in terms of you know if if if, if birds are infertile or, or low fertility we we need to understand why now i will um often keep birds uh, for a second year you know some birds are late bred uh, if you don't know when the bird is bred it could be a late bred bird and you've got no idea um you know uh, whether it's sexually mature or not and um, some fertility can be uh, down to conditioning so birds just aren't in sufficient breeding condition breeding condition it's a gradual thing you've got to build it up there's no point we're going to look at this in the next couple of episodes no point trying to snap a bird into breeding condition because you, you just won't do it and um, other one particularly with the big heavy feathered birds you know have you um, have you trimmed the feathers and um, uh, so you know they can they can successfully mate and um, that's that's really important whole variety of, of, of different things Mohammed and you know the consideration really is to look at the different things and to knock them off your list one by one so you know other birds sexually mature have you if the heavy feathered bird like the Norwich are have you trimmed them and um, are they in you know breeding condition some pairs just aren't compatible um, if I find that I've got a cockbird that's not filling eggs for some reason um, what I will do is at the end of the year is I'll test mate him with another bird uh, to see whether or not he um, you know he is he is uh, fertile uh, and, he, and he's capable of filling eggs hope that answers the question appreciate you getting in touch with the channel thanks very much that brings an end to question time today and it brings an end to the show today uh, i hope as always you've enjoyed watching it if you have and you haven't already liked and subscribed to the channel please hit the like button hit the subscribe button we are ebbing closer to 9,000 subscribers which is fantasy land for me never thought we'd get there i don't know what i'll do if and when we reach 10,000 subscribers like run around the garden um I hope you've enjoyed the show today. Uh, any comments in the sections below? Give us a thumbs up on the channel if you have. If you haven't, hit me a message and tell me why and I'll see if I can do something about it. We've got loads to look forward to on this season of the Canary Room. We've got a, a visit um, agreed uh, in the last week with Peter Harrison, the, the king of zebra finches. So we're going to go off topic from canaries and natives. We're going to go and see Peter and his zebra finches as well. We've got, as soon as the restrictions in the UK allow us to, we've got a whole load of visits lined up. I cannot wait to get back on the road. Until next time, everyone, thanks for watching. Take care.